Okay, hi everyone, it's Miranda, and I had the camera pointing at my iPad right here because I bought a new application for my flight simulator, which I wanted to show you, and it's right here. It's called AirTrack, and let me go ahead and start it. Okay, now we have to dismiss this, and then we've got to pick this location here, and then it'll work. Now, um, I've got the airplane set at uh, Nice in France, and if you can look along the bottom here, I think you can see the, um, the various... It's got an EFIS here, it's got a flight uh, management computer here, it's got your comms, so we can go ahead, if we do the comms, for example, and here we can set the various frequencies that we want. Um, if we go to the FMC, or the flight management computer, this is where we can go ahead and set up a flight. As you can see, it says there, no flight plan loaded, or we can go to the EFIS, uh, and the EFIS shows us where we are right here. Let me go ahead and uh, take off some of the things here. So you, there you go. And so this line here is showing the coastline. Uh, it shows us right here at the airport. Um, it shows us over here what our NAV2 radio setting is at. Uh, and it's 114.8 on the NAV1. It's got 108.9, I think is what it says. Now we can also change this, uh, and we can see other information here. Here's another piece of information. Here's back to the other piece of information. Um, we can also go over here, and what this does is this shows um, your primary flight displays, and then here it shows the navigational displays. So right here we've got our attitude indicator. On the left-hand side we have our airspeed indicator, which of course says zero. Uh, and on this side, this side um, we've got our altimeter right here, and then below it we've got our compass. And we can go ahead and change that just to have it look like this or we can change it again and go back to here. So let's go back to, uh, let's see where we were. Let's go back to here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take off so you can see, um, you can see what it looks like. Now you'll start to see the airspeed is going to pick up as I go down the runway. See the airspeed picking up right here? And then the altimeter over here we'll pick up as soon as we go ahead and take off and we're going to go ahead and take off about here get a nice positive rate of climb there we go and I'm going to go ahead and put the gear up and if we turn a little bit to the right see where the attitude indicator is turning also you'll notice the moving map is turning You'll also see here, this white line is called your uh, vertical uh, speed indicator. It shows how fast we're climbing. Um, we've got our airspeed over here, it's picking up. Um, and then we can turn here. And as I said, this line here is the coast. Uh, we can then come over here if we want to and we can change any of the radio frequencies and then we can go back to the EFIS and then we can go back to the map and we can set all kinds of dis settings for the map um, so I just wanted you to see uh, what this what this looks like and we can go back to here you can see this, see how it's working. Now I'm banking to the right. You can see me bank to the right. You can also see we're still climbing. Now if I level her off a little bit, we're still climbing. You can see we're still climbing. Now if I use the trim control so we don't climb as much, there see how it's coming down? And then see how the vertical speed indicator is coming down? And now you'll actually see it start to go down because we start to lose a little bit of altitude.
and I like this display. Uh, and I can actually change this to different displays. Here's another display that we can choose from. And we can go back to here. So you've got, all the diff you've got different views. And there's even more things you can do with this, but I want to just basically show you what it, um, what it looks like. And you can see where you've got the heading here, you've got your nav one frequency here, you have your nav two frequency over here, and over here under the nav one where it says DME, that stands for distance measuring equipment, and there's no frequency that's chosen that's associated with the DME, so that's why you've just got the hash lines there. Um, so this gives you an idea of um, of what this program looks like. There's still a lot on this program that um, I, uh, I'm still learning because I just got the program today, but um, I wanted you to go ahead and see what it looks like. So here we're back here. You can see us flying along. And then we can go back to here. Otherwise, we can go back to this one. So that's basically... There, let me pause the aircraft. That's basically what it looks like. It's actually an aid. You can use that as an aid for uh, flying because this particular map display is not available on all aircrafts. So a pilot could actually have their laptop download this application, actually use this with the USB connection in the cockpit uh, to help them navigate. Um, and so this is an actual instrument that you can use either on the simulator or you can use it uh, on a real aircraft. So that's what I wanted to show you. And I showed you some of the different things here. Let me go back to here. And then we can dismiss this. We don't need that. So we're back here. And then we can go to here. And then we can go back to there. So that's what it looks like. Okay, well, I hope you like that. Uh, it's called AirTrack, and I'm using it on X-Plane 10, and I hope you enjoyed that little demonstration of, a, of an electronic flight instrument system, often just commonly known as an EFA system. Okay, bye-bye.